guys like see you playing in, in London. There's, there's, there's no support coming to it. And we, you know, within 24 hours, they got back and said, yeah, that's cool, yeah, yeah, we can. So the next minute we were playing with Megadeth, it was that easy, you know? So, so don't, you know, it's, it's not always that complicated. Sometimes you can just send, send an email. Um, I was chatting to some students out of Brack um, sort of uh, prior to this, and um, one, of, one of my favorite bands is Faith No More. And um, sort of some, uh, somewhere in an email trail a couple of months ago, um, Billy Gould, the bassist email came up. And I thought, oh, there's Billy Gould's email. I got really excited. I just sent him an email. I was like, hey, Billy, what's up? You know, introduced the band and stuff. And about four hours later, he was back and, and we, we, we were talking. So, you know, sometimes it can be that easy. You can just ping out an email. And, you know, these people are just sat there quite often in front of a computer screen and they're just like, phone goes and they're like, oh, you know, and if they can be bothered, they will get back. You know, so it's, it's always worth trying. Yeah. Really, is an example of how to get yourself heard. Yeah. It's actually make some noise. Yeah, in the first yeah. place. You know, ask the question, you'll get the answer. And that's it. Yeah. And most of the time, people say no. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, you just keep asking and asking. That's it. I mean, yeah. and you know, don't don't be scared of no because only they know that they said no. Everyone else doesn't know that. So you can ask like 50 people, and they, you know, it's it's you know, there is a sort of um, like a law of averages which we use, which is the four percent rule, which is if you ask 100 people, four people will say yes. You know, so it's quite good stuff. Right? So you know, sometimes yeah. if we're struggling with a certain element, we'll just literally spam out hundreds of emails, and and just on a numbers game, you know, you will get some something back from that. And then when you get something back, you start working with that, and that will move you to the next stage, to the next, you know. Yeah. So okay, so we, so we're going to the MU now. I'm just interested what the MU's role in this these days, because everything's kind of changed a lot. That the battlefield is completely different than it was 10, 20 years ago. So. I, mean, I know you protect musicians' rights, but this idea is, is thousands of bands. How, how do we get them all heard? I mean, do we have to? You know, it's yeah. Well, it's, I mean, for us, I suppose we, you know, our role is not to, is not so much on the musical side of things in a sense, because you know, our job is not to say, well, this band is really good and this isn't. Our job is to try and support you with what you do, and I think um, a lot of it comes down to the you ideas know, these guys have been talking about to do with you know persistence. Um, you know, hustling, and I think, you know, that, and that's the kind of thing we support with, basically, is we'll support you with that, all the kind of advice you might need, whether it's copyright, whether it's, you know, checking the contract with a distributor, um, with a manager, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know, I, I think there's a tagline on one of our adverts, something like, you know, you don't, you're a musician, you know, don't be an accountant, don't be a lawyer, be a musician, and we'll help you with that stuff. And that's kind of our role, um, I guess, in, in, in this. No, I mean, and it's a good role, it's an important role, but I guess uh, the level we're at here, we talk about here, you probably don't need an account or a lawyer yet, that's coming in the future, things go right <laughs> or wrong, um, but that bit we get heard in the first place to get out of the rehearsal room. Is, is there a role then you could play in that, you know, this, the very, very, the bottom, you know, just trying to get out that door into the next door? But with advice, I, I mean, I, not, I don't expect you to be able to set kicks up the people, but Information, advice, space, whatever. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, I think I think the advice really. Um, and you know, if, if if you're a member, you know, you can call us up. We can help you with your anything to do with your career. Really, you know, we have we have for one to one session of the members. Events, do with skills. It's a big thing, I suppose. So you know, like um, these guys were saying about you know skills. So like you know, finance, about you know what do you do about tax? If you're you know you just left uni, you want to be in a band. What do you do about tax? What do you do about being self-employed? We can help with that kind of stuff. You know, all your different income streams, um, have all the stuff like PRS maybe, um, do you want to do some teaching to earn some money on the side, um, you know, what contracts do you use for your, for your gigs so you're making sure you get paid. You know, even, even when you're starting out, I think, you know, if you, if you really want to make it, it's not just about how do you get heard, it's about how do you get heard and people keep listening, isn't it? How do you keep, keep on going? And I think if you really want to do this, you know, then you can start being professional about it at a really early stage in a sense, you know, be, be, do everything the best you can and start learning as many skills as you can at the beginning and then that will stand you in good stead for later on, I guess. So, you know, I, I, I guess that's kind of where I'd see us as being in this. I mean, how, how much advice can you give out? I mean, there's a lot of bounds. Do, do they get in touch with you, what, you know, young bands, say, what should we do about this? Do you know anybody you could do with about that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we can talk to, you know, we try and talk to every member who, you know, we've got 30,000, over 30,000 members, and we'll talk to every, all of them, you know, if they, if they get in touch. Um, so absolutely, we, you know, we try and get out across, across the region and, and do one-to-one -one sessions. Um, I guess, 
you know, the other thing I, the thing, the thing I have to say is that you know, if you join, hopefully you don't need us. In a sense, what we're there for almost is like a safety net, really. You know, you know, talk to us before stuff gets so bad that you know nobody can do anything about it. You know, we're there, and you join, so you can get our advice with any issues you've got, any questions you've got at the beginning, rather than waiting until they get really. So you, know, you, you did one gig and you didn't get paid. Well, you know, talk to us about it. We can try and help. We can try and you know give you some advice on that. So you're not getting to like your hundredth gig, and you're not getting paid. We have a problem with that. You know, you've got you know partnerships and stuff like that is a, is a typical thing in bands. You know, you, everyone is is happy with being in a band. You know, at the start, you're all great mates. You know, you, you're at uni or whatever. You're at college. You're all enjoying playing together. That's fine. It's when you know you you it's you know a few years on. And you know you're all maybe getting a bit sick of each other because you've been in a bus going around you know the country for many months, and that's when you start getting problems. So if we if we can help at the start, then that potentially prevents problems later on, I suppose. Mm. Well, the problems when the first checks arrive. And yeah, it's almost not split its quarters. What's going on? Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll come if they've got a house and I'm living in a dustbin. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, it, and it does have so, so Paul, my colleague, who's in those bands, um, like the Dam, the UFO, and people like that. I, I mean, he, it happened to him, you know, they got, um, they signed a new record deal, they got a huge advance. I think they something like half the band living, most of the band were living in Birmingham, and he was somewhere else. Um, and he knew they were kind of paying money for this flat or whatever they didn't need. And he kind of, you know, kind of rocked up one day, you know, expecting, like, you know, where's my, where's my slice of this huge advance? You know, I can. Get a nicer house. I can, you know, do whatever I want. Where's my bit of it? It's like, oh, it's, we spent it. Like, it's all gone. You know, it's, it, these kind of things do happen. I mean, probably not. But you're not going to get an advance anymore, unfortunately. So. Mm. Yeah. There you go. Sorry about that. <laughs> but you know, so you, you, you might not have that problem. But, yeah, you quarter know. of nothing is still nothing. Yeah, yeah. But but you know, so these things these things do happen. You know, we get you know queries about this kind of stuff all the time. So you know, I think. If, if you really want to make it, you know, I, I went to a session with the BBC introducing guys um, before the summer, and they were saying, you know, well, you know, it's kind of almost typical what the guys were saying. Well, actually, getting a song played on BBC introducing is not is not where you want to be. Like that's that's the first step. You know, if, if you've not made it when you get a song played on the radio, you know, you've got to keep going. Past, that's the first step on your journey. Really, you've got to keep going past that. So I'd say that is that that's our role is to help you try and be. You know, professional about it, and have all the skills you need to try and, you know, make a, a career in music, and not just, you know, a thing that you just kind of keep going but kind of making money from. It's a good point that that piece introduced. It's great service. It's great. It's there, but the media is not as powerful as it used to be. You know, in the seventies and eighties, a radio play could get you a lot of space, but now it's just part of a whole raft of different medias. So, it's so and that's an important thing to realise. Well, like you said, it's not you get played the radio. You don't stop there, do you? No, it's not really a way you try and trigger other things, don't you? Absolutely, and I, I guess it partly depends on what you want to achieve. You know, if you, but in either case, it's not it's not just what you need. You know, if you want to deal with a major label, then they're not just going to be looking at whether you've had radio play. You know, they're looking at your social media and how many followers do you have and how many people have watched your YouTube videos and all that kind of stuff. It's all you know. They've got you know, teams looking at all the data on exactly you know what presence you have online because that's if they sign you to a deal, that's what's going to. You know, help you to sell records. Similarly, if you want, you know, a, a, if you're looking at going with, you know, an indie label or self-releasing stuff like that, you need just not, you know, you want to get on the radio, but you need to be on, like you say, on social media, um, you know, doing gigs, and, and all those different things kind of add up to make more of a, a presence, don't they? Not just. Well, I think if you're a guitar band, I'm just sort of looking around here because most people play sort of guitar or take music. Playing live is the key now. I think um, people want you to go out and tour, that's how you sell records, yeah, you yeah. on the road with your merch store, etc, etc. That's where, where you're starting off basically is where most of your sales are going to be. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing that you can do for yourself, you know, as well, you know, do as much as you can yourself, you know, put on your own gigs, find somewhere, do it yourself, you know, um, find Selling your own merch is really important. important. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Well. You want as many income streams as you can. So if you can, you know, self release your own record. But the idea of getting your mates selling merch is, I think, it's a waste of time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because you've got to get off the stage, get on the merch, and sell it. Because yeah, people, people want to have a chat with you. you know, it's not because they think you're a, a big rock star or that kind of cliche crap. They just want to say, I like you get. You say, do you want to buy a CD? That's, that's, and, that's and that's where your fans come, isn't it? That's yeah. where your fans come from. You know, you want to build up. You know, you need, 
people who are going to be interested in your music mm. and, and, and want to follow you so that you know they don't just come to the first gig you do an extra, they come to the next one and the next one and they you know look at your first single and then the second one. You know, you need you need you need that kind of following, don't you, in a sense? And Which goes back to the community that we talked about before, you know, this idea. It is a community when you start off it's a small community, it ends up being a big community, doesn't it? I guess yeah. even Chris Martin Coldplay is, is a very big community, but not a very exciting one. So, uh, <laughs> so how, no would, how would you suggest that first? I mean, there's, there's, there's other ways, we're not, I don't think we covered everything here, so what do you want to do? Um, so, PRS Music, we don't necessarily help musicians or songwriters um, to get heard. We pay you when you're heard, so whether you're performing at a gig, if you've had radio plays, your music to be used on TV, streaming, YouTube, whatever, we will pay you for that. Um, my personal advice is a really, really simple one, is <laughs> don't be a dick. Um, the music industry may seem, seem really big, but it's actually really, really small. Um, people are more willing to help you if you're a nice person to them, and I come across it in my job as well. If someone's very blunt with me in an email, I'm kind of a bit reluctant. I don't know if anyone else feels the same to go out of my way to help them. But if I meet someone like at events like this and they are the most wonderful, polite person, I will do as much as I can for them. I'll happily put them in touch with other people as well. And it all, again, comes down to that community thing. When you're at gigs as well and you go up to the artist, you know, be nice. Like, be nice to other people around you because you're in that community. And if someone points you out as a horrible person in that community, they don't want you in it, so you're going to have to go. I think that's probably my advice. And social media as well. And with your music, be confident about your music. Don't come up to me and be like, oh, hi, here's my CD, it's not quite finished, oh, things need tweaking, blah, blah, blah. So that kind of puts me off listening to it. Be like, this is going to be the best thing you've heard of. And that makes me want to go home and listen to it and do things and follow you on social media and say, like, hey, like, check out this really good band kind of thing. That would be my opinion. The second thing about you were saying there, you know, the idea that somebody's got a demo that's perfectly produced would be weird, wouldn't it? You know, if, like, if you're a young band, you expect the demo to sound wonky. In fact, in a way, they're probably the best recordings you'll ever make. Honestly, they're amazing. Like, I went to Beautiful Days Festival and I saw, managed to, yeah. <laughs> I stumbled off a, across a band called Burnout 13. And they were like a group of lads and they were like 16 to 18. And they were lovely. And I bought a CD off them and the CD's brilliant. I mean, it's not perfect, but I love that raw punk sound that it's, you know, a few bits are wrong here, a few bits are wrong there. I love that because that's the band as they are. You, if you listen to that CD, that's what they're going to be like live. I mean, it's the worst thing when you listen to something and it's perfect and you sit to see them live and it's fucking awful. And you think, oh my God, like, have I gone into the wrong gig sort of thing? But yeah, you know, nothing's perfect. And it's, it's what is perfect in the music industry? No, it's, it's just one person's opinion. It's how they killed so many great bands trying to make them perfect. And the first piece of advice there, uh, probably picking a bit on that, but about being nice, which is probably, you know, makes life a lot easier. But trouble is, nice people don't tend to make the best music, do they? <laughs> no. Like, the too many Chris Martins are not. Yeah, like, you know. but you'll, you'll get stopped somewhere down the line if, you know, and it's the same thing, the industry is very small. And, you know, like, PRS is a huge company. And my team are all regionally, so I'm based in Bristol and I look up the southwest, someone up north and someone east. And we all know what's going on and who's who. And normally we'll be like, oh, have you met this person? Oh, yeah, he's on the right knob. And we're just kind of more like, and people do that in the industry. Like, if you're a nice person, you'll go places. Um, but if you're not, somewhere down the line, it's going to hit you in the face. And it's not going to be very nice. If only nice people make good records, though. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> so, so, so that's good advice. I mean, PRS actually get involved anyway. So you do put money in, don't you, at grassroots level? Yeah, so we've got um, a sister company called the PRS Foundation. And they're all to do with music funding. Um, so they help uh, songwriters, composers, organisations, people in bands, duos, trios, whatever. Um, get to the next level of their career. It's all about championing new music. 
Um, there's a, I don't know what stage anyone is here in their career, but there's a really good fund called the Open, Open Fund, and that's grants of up to £5,000, and that can help you guys, I don't know, um, if you need to record a new album, or if you want to go on tour, anything that's going to help you progress, they're happy to help with. They've got a huge website and there's loads of leaflets outside, so it's worth. Yeah, and it's, Vanessa Reed's here. Not everybody gets, it's not like everybody just, everybody in this room can walk there and get their own paid for. That was, it's, it's a lot of qualifications you have to go through, I'd imagine. Um, yeah, so there's um, different levels, um, stages that you have to go through. Yeah. And when we look at the decide who gets funding, it's not just PRS who decides, we get um, people from a wider industry to come in and we'll talk about it and things like that so it's really worth checking out um, we also have um, PRS presents nights as well where um, members can come in and perform their music so we just had idols and um, Honeyblood play last week two weeks ago I mean, what criteria would you be looking for I mean obviously it's going to be quite varying different types of music but there are certain rules apart from being nice but of a certain kind of criteria that, that you'd look for to, to give money to people from the PRS Foundation? Um, have really good music, which I'm sh I know that's really simple. Quite a, quite a broad term. Yeah, but have really good music and have have a business plan. Like, as sucky as it sounds, the music industry, I know you're all creating people, but it is a business. And it's so important to understand the business and know what's going on in the industry and understand your rights as well. There's no point emailing or filling out an application and sending one song in and being like, yeah, can I have, can I have 10 grand please? Because we'll just be like, what? No. <laughs> what are you going to use that money for? How is it going to progress you as an artist, a songwriter or composer? What's it going to do for your career? And what do you want to get out of it? Okay, so people in this room, I'm talking about, again, they don't all look like the creative business, not all of them, some of them might be, you know, but not all of them. What, what, what happens if you're just useless as a business, but you're a total genius? I mean, can you actually go to you for advice? Can you go to PRS and say, look, I'm not actually that good a business, but this stuff I'm doing, it's getting a great reaction. Can you help me, please? Can you pair me up with somebody? Can you give me some advice? Do you do stuff like that, or do you just say, go, go and find somebody to see one? I always do. It, you yeah. know, I, I will always give people advice. I, yeah. I think that's really important. I think a lot in the music industry, it's always important to throw that ladder down and help someone out, because otherwise it's a very lonely place to be. Um, I will happily give people advice, and you know, if I don't know someone, I'm, I probably will know, uh, if I don't know something, I will know someone who does. So if it's anything to do with like legal advice, then I'll pass them on to Andrew. Or if it's, you know, oh, I really want to know like how production works. Cool, I know like a music, like whatever, I'll pass you on. Um, so I'm more than happy to do that, and I think it's important. That's a great that. service, really important. And yeah. Pick some themes, community themes, talk about before. Pooling and sharing resources, you know, like, these lucky's in a band where they can all do all that stuff. Yeah. But if you're in a band where everyone can, you know, you've got a great bass player, but he's a pretty dysfunctional human being, can't do anything. But you need a video maker, you can go and swap your skills around. Yes, yeah, so that's it. The bands are small units, but they all, they all work together, you've got a music scene down yeah. there. Yeah, definitely. And um, I think um, one thing is also when you are like in a band or you're a solo songwriter or musician or artist, um, have a look out at like colleges and universities because they're dying. Like you know, media uh, students are dying to have something on their CV, so they'll probably do it for you for free. It's a really great piece of advice. Yeah, that, you know, it's, and, and also uh, it's free when you've got no money, but don't forget when you get paid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, trying to offer like. Well, it's a local example of that one because don't Radiohead sleeves get designed by the guy that Tom York went to university next to with, and they, they just kept them on, and they still do the sleeves to this day, they did it from the beginning. So it can work. So if you've got like, if there's any media students in here, it's not just you're getting used because you're free. It can actually be, and also because you're, you're, you're about the same age, the same influences, and the same ideas, so that's, it kind of works that level. Yeah. And if they like your music, then that's a bonus as well. Yeah, yeah. Or, or if they just understand, they don't necessarily have to even like the music, just have to understand what you're trying to do, I think. Yeah. yeah they can visualise it. Yeah. That's a very good tip, that, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay, Marie, so you, you've been involved in this music scene around here in a quite hands on way for, for not a long time. But for some it time. is a long time. <laughs> 
So well, what has it changed? How, how, how were bands present themselves 20, 30 years, 20 years ago, whatever, to now? Um, I mean, it's changed loads on one level and not at all on another level, you know. Um, but yeah, when I first moved here 30 years ago, I was writing a, a small fanzine um, that had had some sort of critical acclaim, luckily from the great John Peel and Janice Long at the time. Um, so yeah, we, we kind of came here not really knowing anything about the scene. Um, so, you know, you read, there was no such thing as the internet, no one had a computer, no one had a mobile phone. So basically you just had to search out the venues yourself and go there, physically go there and talk to people and meet people um, and build those relationships with people from the ground up. Um, which obviously now it is possible just to sit in your room and kind of communicate with people online um, and never step out, but I would echo what everyone on the panel here has said today. I think that's still massively important to get that human connection. But well, do both. Do both, exactly, yeah. Yeah, so use the best of, of, of both worlds. Um, I also wanted to um, pick up on um, the reason, the, the title of this panel, How to Get Your Music Heard. When I first heard it, I thought, okay, so I think about it and I was thinking, well, heard by who? And I think that is quite an important question um, because everybody's got a different motivation for making music and putting it out there. And I think the first thing, before you think about anything else at all, is you've really got to explore what your motivation is for creating music and performing music if you perform. Is it because you know you want kind of worldwide fame and fortune and um, to go down in history and be notorious for your art, or you know is it because you just have to create because that's the way you express yourself and you can't you know you just have to do it you can't do anything else but you know you're you're actually a shy person you don't actually want to go out there and and you know show it to the world but you just want to you just want to do it. Um, and perhaps earn a modest living from it? Or is it a 